It was springtime in the top left-hand corner of Wales. Time to clean out the dusty corners and time to wash small railway engines. Oh, what's that? Oh, the telephone. Answer it for me, would you, Bluebell? Oh, no, of course you can't. You're a donkey, aren't you? All right, I'm coming. Hello? Oh, hello, Di. Yes, just giving Ivor a wash. Yes, all right, I'll fill up his tank and we'll be up in a minute. Bye-bye. Right then, Ivor, we have work to do. Thank you, Bluebell. I'll have the bucket. We're off to Land Mad to fetch a new loom for Miss Plofsky, the weaving lady. Your tank is low, Ivor. We'd better fill it up. Hello? What have you stopped for? I've got to fill up your tank. Well, now look, Ivor, we have to go under the water tower to fill up your tank. Come on. No, Ivor, if every time I open the regulator, you slam on the brakes, we're going to get nowhere at all. And you'll very likely burst a feed pipe. So come on, under the water tower. Oh, Ivor, this is ridiculous. Die! Die, listen, Ivor won't go under the water tower. Look, I haven't the slightest idea why. All I know is every time I open the regulator, he slams on the brakes. I mean, it's ridiculous. Oh, well, I wish you would. Oh, Bluebell, I don't know what's come over, Ivor. Oh, you're off, are you? <laughs> I don't seem to have any friends this morning. Oh, die, there you are. Oh, 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 uh, Miss, good morning, Miss Plofsky. I I'm afraid our engine is being a bit difficult this morning. Ah, uh, perhaps he has sadness. In my life there has been much sadness. Believe me, I, Olga Polovsky, I too have known great sadness. And I am your friend. Oh, oh well, uh, I don't think it's anything quite that serious, Miss Plofsky. Uh, it's, it's just that he won't go under the water tower. Ah, but Ivar is my friend. For me, he would go under Niagara Falls. Wouldn't you, Ivar? Oh. You see? Come, Ivor, I will lead you. Follow me. Follow me. Well, I I'm afraid that isn't going to work, Miss Plofsky. As a matter of fact, one whistle like that means no. Ivor, now listen to me. I am the station master. It is my duty to arrange the work. I have told Miss Plofsky here that you will go to Hlanmad and fetch her new loom. Now, will you kindly go under the water tower and fill up your tank? Hello, everybody. What's going on? Ah, there's Mrs. Porty. Well, she actually owns the railway, so if anybody can tell Ivor what to do, she can. Ah, Mrs. Porty. Perhaps you have some authority over this disobedient engine of yours. He refuses point blank to go under the water tower. Oh, <laughs> well, that's easily dealt with. Oscar, Aubrey, Lionel, you've had your holiday. Home time. Ah, got you. Yes, you see, the water in the lily pond was black and dirty and full of all sorts of rubbish. Come on, Lionel. Home time. Ah, there we are. One has to be so careful with goldfish, you know. I had to put them somewhere. I knew you wouldn't mind. Oh, no, we, we, we don't mind. Only, uh, if you just told us, we might have got on a bit better. Oh, Ivor knew, didn't you, Ivor? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everybody. You know, Di, I sometimes wonder just who does run this railway. What does it matter, so long as we are all happy? And that's quite enough from you, Ivor the Engine.
is a box, a musical box, wound up and ready to play. But this box can hide a secret inside. Can you guess what is in it today? It's Windy Miller. Hello, Windy. Are you busy? Plenty of corn to grind. Plenty of wind in your sails. Ah, yes, they're going nicely, aren't they? Windy Miller, Windy Miller, sharper than a thorn. Like a mouse, he's spry and nimble when he grinds the corn. Like a bird, he'll watch the wind and listen for the sound, which says he has the wind he needs to make the sails go round. Phew, it's warm work being a miller. Have you any more sacks of corn to move? Ah, you're a lucky man, Windy. You like your work. You're never so happy as when you hear the sound that says you have the wind you need to make the sails go round. This is what Windy likes doing most of all, listening to the sails turning. Windy has lived in Collie's Mill all his life and he loves the sound of the wind in the sails. Long ago, when Windy was young, all the farmers brought him their corn to grind, but now they send it to the town, to the monster mechanical millers. Windy doesn't care. There will always be some farmers to bring him some corn, like Farmer Bell here. Jonathan is very pleased with life. It's been a good year for corn. They carry the sacks to the granary where the corn is kept. Jonathan teases Windy. He asks him why he doesn't get rid of his old-fashioned windmill. Windy says that the mill was good enough for his father and good enough for his grandfather and is therefore good enough for him. Besides, the modern machinery doesn't make such a nice noise. Windy will not move with the times. Windy gets some of his home-brewed cider for Jonathan. It's thirsty work carrying sacks. But Jonathan is driving, so he won't have any now. He must go to the station to get his milk churns. But Windy likes cider, so he has a drink. Windy looks at his mill proudly. No one will make him change anything. Cider is very good but it makes people sleepy. Windy's cider is very strong cider. Windy Miller is suddenly very sleepy. Meanwhile, in Camberwick Green, nobody is asleep. Mrs. Dingle, the postmistress, is cleaning her shop window. Peter Hazel, the postman, is emptying the pillar box. Packet, the puppy dog, is helping. Mary and Paddy Murphy are playing hide and seek. Mr. Carraway, the fishmonger, is selling Mrs. Honeyman fresh mackerel. And here, in Murphy's Bakery, there is the greatest activity of all.
Mr. Murphy is a master baker, pudding, pie and pastry maker, biscuits, buns and birthday cakes, everything is marvellous that Murphy makes. This is Captain Snort of Pippin Fort. He's come to give his order for the week. Four dozen loaves of bread, that's 48. Two dozen currant buns, that's 24. A dozen apple tarts, that's 12. And uh, one of these for me. Very good, sir. I'll see that your order is delivered today. Now Mr. Murphy can finish his cake making. No, another customer. Mrs. Honeyman from the chemist's shop and the precious baby. She asks Mr. Murphy to hold the baby while she finds her shopping list. She is giving a big party. She needs 15 tea cakes, 15 macaroons, 15 chocolate eclairs, 15 meringues and a large currant loaf. And talking of currant loaves, did I ever tell you of the time Mrs. Varley tried to make a currant loaf? And Mr. Murphy has to hold the baby while Mrs. Honeyman, who never stops talking, gossips and gossips. Poor Mr. Murphy. But she's gone now. Well, that's two big orders. He'll have to move quickly. Now, let me see. Eggs? Yes. Sugar? Yes. Flour? Oh. Empty. I've run out of flour. Here's a pretty kettle of fish. There's only one thing to do. Go to Windy Miller. Rather a long way, but Mr. Murphy takes the children with him to keep him company. Mrs. Murphy is left to look after the shop, and the van is off to Collie's Mill. Driving along with the baker's man in a rackety-tackety baker's van. Each loaf and cake the baker's bake will roll and shake as our rounds we make with the baker man in the baker's van, the rackety-tackety baker's van. That's odd. Windy's usually about at this time. But Paddy tells his father that Windy has been found. Come along, this way. <laughs> Naughty Mary. But Windy is still sound asleep. Windy, you're asleep. Wake up, please. I've run out of flour, Windy. I must have some immediately. Don't worry, Mickey, says Windy. I will grind you some straight away. Come with me. Oh, dear. I'm afraid the wind has dropped. Poor Mr. Murphy, he'll never get his baking done now. <laughs> but Windy doesn't despair. When he was a boy, people had many odd ideas. He is still a great believer in whistling for the wind. Come along, children, he says. If you want the wind, you must whistle for the wind. Like this. Now you try. And again. Here we are at Pippin Fort, Captain Snort's military academy. It is time for an exercise. Fall in. Sergeant Major Grout takes a deep breath and orders, Artin! Slope, Holmes. Order, Holmes. To the
the truck. Move. The Sergeant Major reports to Captain Snort that the boys are ready to drive off to Camberwick Common to play their tracking games. And off they go. Driving along in an army truck, in a humpity bumpity army truck. The people wave to the soldiers brave, who sing and shout as they lurch about. Oh, we are in luck, we will never be stuck in a humpity bumpity army truck. At Collie's Mill there is still no sign of any wind. But suddenly, Windy sees the army truck approaching. Look! He's going to stop it! Whatever is Windy up to now? Anyway, Captain Snort agrees to it. Ah, so that's it. If one whistle won't work, if three whistles won't work, if four whistles won't work, then so many people whistling is sure to work. Well, so Windy seems to think. We'll see. Sergeant Major Grout gives the order. Company! Whistle! There you are. The wind is beginning to blow. Windy is sure that it is all this whistling. I wonder. Hello, Windy. Did Mr Murphy get the flower he wanted? That must have made him very happy. And you are happy too, because you hear the sound that says you have the wind you need to make the sails go round. Goodbye, Windy. Zebedee had gathered together an orchestra and the concert was about to begin. Follow me closely, he said, hopefully, 
and they all said they would. We are poised, said Brian. <clears throat> Ermintrude was worried. Uh, am I doing it right, darlings? No, you're jolly well not, said Brian. I thought not. Uh, may we try again, said Zebedee. <laughs> oh, silly old me. It was never like this in the Halley. Get your hooves out of it. No need to be like that, said Ermintrude. And Zebedee restarted. All together now, he said. the beat. Please. Ermintrude promised to try harder and apologised for holding them up. Fun, though, she said. Zebedee, undaunted, tried again. Hey, I've just noticed. It's a long way down, isn't it? Just play, said Dylan. I'm stuck. Oh, ma'am, said Dylan. I don't think Brian's very happy, said Florence. I'm stuck on a harp. Well, you would choose the harp, wouldn't you? Great oaf. I think you're rotten. Ermintrude was all for carrying on without the harp. So Zebedee said they'd better. Ignore all harp cues, he said. And drum cues, said Ermintrude. How humiliating, said Dougal. Florence thought they should get on, and so did Dylan. Ermintrude was prepared to give her all. I'm still stuck. Oh, what is the point of it all, said Dougal. Come on, kitten on the keys, he said, which made Ermintrude very cross. Get off, said Dougal. Cheeky thing. Zebedee had one last try. <laughs> Brian solved his particular problem. <whistles> I'm unstuck, he said and lovely with it. I think a lullaby to finish with, sighed Zebedee, as it's time for bed. to have a
Even when he's high up among the snow-covered mountains, Barney greets the new day in his usual cheerful way. Doesn't the air smell wonderful? <laughs> I hate snow. You'll feel better with some breakfast, don't you? I see you two have already polished off the porridge. Porridge? Do try and remember, we're on holiday. We have cheese and pastry for breakfast here. I see you've had your little nibble at the cheese as well. The fresh air will definitely wake him up. Soon, a cable car was carrying them to the top of the highest peak. What's wrong with the fresh air on the hotel balcony? Nothing like cold air streaming in your face as you ski down the side of a huge mountain. If, if Roger's a bit uh, nervous, I don't mind doing a bit of skiing around the hotel just to keep him company. You've never been on skis before, have you? I've never come across this brand of skis before. They seem to want to go in opposite directions. Oh. Maybe you've got them on the wrong feet. Maybe you should try using your sticks. In summer we'll play and lazy in the sunshine Chasing each other's shadows We'll follow a trail to the end of the rainbow To find what the star maker knows I'm a minder I never miss a trick I'm a rascal But I know how Barney ticks I like him Though I'd never let him know That's why Barney will not let me go You've got it, Barney oh, oh, oh. Oh! Oh. Oh. Hey, hey, what, what, what do you think you're doing? Who, who, is, who are you? I'm Mitzi, my job to pull people out from the snow Oh, ha, <laughs> that's enough, thank you. That, that's enough. You must bend the knees. I show you. Oh, leave, leave me alone. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Uh, and look at them go. Well, I have to say, I've never seen anything like this in all my years at these events. Stupid uh, place to put flags. Oh. What a lift off. Oh, a spin. Oh. A double spin. Oh. What a champion. That is fantastic. There you have it there, the top prize for the best double jump of the season has been awarded to the deserving winners. Correction, the prize is for the best triple jump of the season. Black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. 
Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. One sunny morning, Pat was hurrying along the road with a van full of letters and parcels for the people of Greendale. Suddenly, he had to stop. <laughs> it was Alf Thompson driving his sheep across the road. Don't worry, Jess. They won't eat you. The sheep went into a field. And Pat was on his way again. His next stop was at the village school. Where is everybody? The children were bringing things to school for a display. Charlie Pringle had a bunch of flowers. Lucy Selby had brought a basket of eggs. My, your hens have been busy. And Tom Pottage had some day-old chicks. Hey, mind how you go. Whilst looking at all these things, Pat had forgotten his letters. But Bill Thompson came along with a cup of tea. Thank you, said Pat. And Bill took the letters. Sarah Gilbertson came for his cup. Have you done? she said. Nearly. Thanks, Sarah. That was grand. Goodbye. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat Early in the morning just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat
cat feels he's a really happy man. Pat was getting on well with his round. He locked his van and as it was a nice day for a picnic, he took his sandwiches to a field on the hill above Thompson Ground. E, it's been an easy day today. It was so warm that Pat soon fell asleep. But Mrs. Thompson's hens were wide awake and Pat had left his sandwich box open with his keys neatly beside it. The noise woke Pat, just in time to chase after his sandwiches. And then he turned round in time to see a cheeky hen stealing his keys. I must get my keys back. I can't open the van or deliver my letters without them. Oh, so that's where you've got to. Oh dear, it's a long time since I climbed a tree, but here goes. was just reaching out when the hen dropped the keys and flew off. Now the keys were stuck in the tree, and as Pat was climbing towards them, the branch gave way and... Oh! Oh! Right in the middle of a prickly bush. Ouch! Mrs. Thompson had heard the commotion and came to see what was going on. Pat told her about the thieving hen. Deary me, said Mrs. Thompson, the little devil. She must think she's a magpie or some such. We'd better get a ladder and see if we can reach your keys. There'll be no more posts today unless we can, said Pat. That won't do, said Mrs. Thompson, especially when I'm expecting a letter from Auntie Jean to say whether she's coming for Easter or not. So they went for the ladder. I'll take it now. They're here, all right. Look, I've got them. There's something else up here. Lots of things. It's like a magpie's nest. My. He brought everything down to show Mrs. Thompson. There were all kinds of shiny things. There's my wedding ring that went missing last Easter. I thought I'd lost it down the sink. <sighs> That's all right. Uh, I'll get it down. Mind your head. As 
Since my hens have stolen your sandwiches, you'd better come and have some dinner with me. There's plenty to spare. That's very nice of you. Pat was glad he lost his sandwiches when he saw what a good dinner Mrs. Thompson had cooked. Mrs. Thompson was glad too, she'd got her ring back. But it was soon time to be off. Thanks for the meal, it was lovely. Come on, Jess. Jess, come on. Just fancy, said Pat. A magpie hen. <laughs> Who ever heard of such a thing? Pat stopped to tell Sam Waldron about the magpie hen. You'd better keep away from my van, he said. I wonder if that's where my tie pin went. Sounds odd. Oh, just needs a clean. When Pat saw Miss Hubbard, he told her about the magpie hen. Well, I lost a silver earring last month, she said. And a hat pin. I wonder if they're up a tree somewhere. I must go and see Mrs. Thompson. On the way home, Pat met Alf Thompson on his tractor and stopped to tell him about the magpie hen. Alf couldn't think of anything he lost, but he thought it was a good story. Pat had a letter for him. Ooh, one for me. I'll not lose this anyway. Cheerio. Bye. Pat saw some real magpies on the way home and wondered if they had taught Mrs. Thompson's hens to steal. As for Jess, he was asleep. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. One afternoon, Mr. McToot, the keeper of Loch Ness, decided to have a few sharp words with his children. I need to have a serious talk with you two. Oh, dear. Now what have you done, Angus? I haven't done anything wrong. Then what do you call this? Oh, dear. Homework. Aye, homework. And these marks for your mathematics are absolutely terrible. 
Something must be done about this, and done today. Yes, Father. What are we going to do, Angus? These sums are so difficult. I know. Let's call the Nessies. They always know what to do. They blew hard on their secret thistle whistles. <whistles> and at once, cleverness appeared. Cleverness. Just the Nessie we need to talk to. Oh, please help us with our school homework. We're all crosses and no ticks. Let me have a look. Oh, dear, you do need help. I'd better call more Nessies. Hmm, now, uh, who do we have here? Oh, well, never mind. I want all you Nessies to help. Angus and Elspeth are having trouble with their homework. Now, you four Nessies go over there on the, um, right. And uh, you others come over here on my, uh, my, uh, uh, yes, left. Uh, quickly now. You two children pay attention to what we are about to do. Now, I want you two Nessies to move over there and join the others. Go on, silly Ness, move yourself. That's right. Now, two from four. De Angus, are you watching? Uh, that leaves two. Oh, very good. <laughs> Elspeth, uh, what about the other group? Uh, how many are there now? Uh, that makes six. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Just a bit more of that, I think, and uh, then we'll get on to some uh, multiplication. On the far side of the loch, Mr. and Mrs. Flashback were looking for somewhere to take their holiday snaps. Stop the car! Look! Monsters! Look, Ness monsters! Go oh, away! Uh, uh, quick, we will Give me a hand with my camera! Hurry, hurry! This is history! Flash powder, tripod, bellows, plates, sandwiches... <laughs> no time for sandwiches! Come along, woman! <laughs> now, children, uh, uh, do you think you'll remember all that? Oh, yes. And thank you so much for helping us with our homework, Cleverness. I can't wait to see Father's face when he checks our answers. Mind you go carefully now. It's beginning to get, uh, 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 yes, dark. Light the flesh powder! Open the shutter! Now! At that moment, Cleverness was waving goodbye to the children. Got it! I say to go after Loch Ness Monster. We shall be rich and famous, and our names will be household words like... Uh... Like saucepan? Yes. Oh, fancy. No! <laughs> oh, quick, woman! We must get to the newspaper office before they go to print. Oh, hurry! Oh, let's hurry! Yes. The Loch Ness Monster! Yes. Oh, fancy! Yes. It's so much easier now we know how. Eh, uh, was it four or six? What did Cleverness say? Come on, Elspeth. It's quite simple. Are you two ready for your beds? I'm about to make your cocoa. Good morning, Father. Isn't it a beautiful day? Did you look at our homework, Father? Aye, all correct. A job well done. More than can be said for this article here. Just look at this silly picture. Does that look like a Loch Ness monster to you? Stuff and nonsense. It's stuff and nonsense, all right, Father. And if anyone's going to see a Loch Ness Monster, I shall be the first, and that's for sure. But of course, Father. You can knock it, you can rock it, you can go to Timbuktu, but you'll never find a Nessie in the zoo. You may see an anaconda, a giraffe and kangaroo, but you'll never see a Nessie in the zoo. Walking in a wacky way of chalking, Charlie Chalk. Charlie Chalk. Oh, Charlie Chalk. Charlie Chalk. Charlie Chalk. Charlie Chalk. He can get you out of trouble, he can teach you how to juggle. That's Charlie Chalk. Charlie Chalk. Yeah, Charlie Chalk. Charlie Chalk. He rode a boat to sea to do some sleeping and some fishing. When he awoke, he saw an island. Was he breathing or just wishing? Walking in a wacky way of jogging, Charlie Chalk. Charlie Chalk. Oh, Charlie Chalk. That looks nice. Yes, very nice.
Did you hear that? There it goes again. I wonder what it is. Charlie! Charlie Chalk! I could have sworn I heard somebody call my name. You did. It's me, up here. Trader Jones. What are you doing up there? Testing coconuts. Listen. They're ripe. And that can mean only one thing. What? It's time for the coconut harvest. Come on. Come on. So, let me get this straight. Your friends help you harvest the coconuts for your store. And in exchange for the work, they go to your store and you give them coconuts. Right. It's so simple, it's beautiful. Look, there's Buttercup. Ahoy, Captain Mildred. Ahoy, Trader Jones. Ahoy, Charlie Shaw. It's time for the coconut harvest. And I assume you want me to A, get the others, and B, tell them exactly what to do. Absolutely. And for your work, I will trade you. I will trade you. Oh. Here, allow me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How do you do that? It's easy, when you know how. You will trade me what? I will trade you three coconuts. Wait a minute. I worked for three coconuts last year. What about inflation? Mm, well, how about four coconuts? Four? I'm sorry, Mr. Jones. I'm worth far more than four coconuts. Right. Five coconuts, but that's the top offer. Eight, or I don't work. Seven. It's a deal. Ta-da! I wish I could do magic tricks. Well, what are we waiting for? Oh, Captain Mildred's calling. Louis, are you coming? Ouch! <laughs> Is everyone present? Aye, 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 aye. You all know your places? At my command? Does everyone have a job for the coconut harvest? Of course! Arnold shakes the coconuts out of the trees. And I, Lewis T. Duck, pick them up, inspect them, and put them in that sack. Go, Arnold. Coconut! Ouch! Arnold! Sorry, Lewis. I didn't uh, ooh, mean it. Who's that? Her name's Punka. We don't see her much except at harvest time. She loves removing the husks. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and my job is to drive the coconuts to my store and unload them at the other end. I'm impressed, aren't you? Mildred, Arnold, Lewis, Punker, Trader Jones, Rabbit... Wait a minute. What about Edward? I don't see Edward. Oh. Hello, Edward. Hello, everybody. Is it morning already? Edward, wake up. It's the coconut harvest. Oh, no. Not the coconut harvest. Oh, that means... That means work, and lots of it. You mean Edward's got a job too? This I've got to see. What's your job, Edward? My job? Well, my job is to uh, ooh, count coconuts. Then A, go count coconuts, and B, do it now. Aye, aye. Edward's going to work. One, two, uh, three, four... You know, Trader Jones, everybody's got a job for the coconut harvest, except me. Well, what can you do? I can do this. Or this. Or this. Ta-da! Wait a minute. Where do you put my coconuts? I wish I could do magic tricks. That's the second time you've made that wish today. He better be careful. His wish might come true. I know, Charlie. Why don't you make the coconuts harvest themselves? Then none of us would have to work. Five, six, seven. That was good to me. Eight. Nine. Well, to be honest, that's not really my kind of magic. I do the circus kind. Ouch! Allow me. Oh, I really do wish I could do magic tricks. What was that? I don't know. Just a brief force-eight squall. No need to worry, Arnold. Resume shaking. <laughs> Oh. Uh -huh. What was that? It landed in this bush somewhere. Oh. 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 I'm getting too old for these long flights. Who are you? I'm Mary the Hover Fairy. Somebody here made the same wish three times. Um, yes. And I've come to grant it. I'm one of the new kind of fairies. To think that I'm not would be wrong. If it's tricks that you need, I'll perform them with speed. But miracles take I've lost Houdini again. Who's Houdini? My magic wand. But don't worry, he'll turn up. Always does. So, who made that wish? Um, well, I did. And the wish was... Now, oh wait, don't tell me, I'll get it. Uh, yes, I remember now. You wished you could do magic tricks. That's right. Okay. Are you ready? Ready for what? I'm going to grant your wish. Something tells me this could be interesting. Spiders and ticks. Cakes from a mix. Seventy-six magic tricks. Is that it? I think so. 
Uh, what do I do now? What do you want to do? I want to magic the coconuts into the store so I don't have to shift them myself. Coconuts into store. Coconuts into store. Right. Here's what you do. Point to the coconuts like this. Good. Then you say, Alakazer, coconuts there. Alakazer, coconuts there. And point to the store. Hey, what's going on? Oh dear, that's not quite right, is it? But where did the coconuts go? Get me out of here! A. I want to know what is going on, and B. I want it stopped now. This is no way to conduct a coconut harvest. I know, dear, but he's new at this magic stuff. Don't worry, he'll get it. Why don't you give it another whirl? This time, say... Alakazoov, coconuts move. Alakazoov, coconuts move. Oh no, help! I don't think I want to do any more magic tricks. Get me down from here at the double. Oh, look! Here's your wand. Thank you. What luck. Now come along, Houdini. We've got to get Captain Mildred out of that tree. Well, everything's undone. You're out of the tree. And you can no longer do magic tricks. Not that you ever could. Well... I guess it's time for me to fly away. Well, uh, wait a minute. It wasn't really your fault, you know. Well, I do admit Houdini is partly to blame. But I made that wish three times. If I hadn't, you never would have come to Merry Twit. And if you hadn't come to Merry Twit, we would never have met such an A, interesting hover fairy, and B, excellent first mate. First mate? Yes. Have you ever considered settling down? You bet. I'm too old to fly round granting wishes all the time. Then come and live with me on Buttercup. I would think a little magic comes in handy with the washing up. Oh, it does. It does. I reckon a little magic properly used never hurt anyone. Right, Charlie? Right. Charlie Chalk, Charlie Chalk Got a funny way of walking and a wacky way of chalking Charlie Chalk, Charlie Chalk Oh, Charlie Chalk, Charlie Chalk Landed on an island, now he's living in the jungle Everybody comes around to see him clown and watch him tumble Charlie Chalk, Charlie Chalk, Charlie Chalk, Charlie Chalk In a field above Pontypandy, on a rather hot day, Sarah and James 
are picking potatoes for Bella Lasagna. Oh, it's hard work, this. Girls, 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 moan, moan, moan. Come on, let's just get the job done. Just because you know Bella will give you some ice cream, greedy. Listen, it's Uncle Sam and Jupiter. Well, sir, a day and a half this has been. It's a weather, I suppose. That's right, Fireman Sam. Uh, blazing hot weather means lots of fires. Hey, Crittington? Hey, oh, I, you blazers. A, bla a blazing hot uh, weather. Uh, too, too right, uh, man. Um, uh, sir. Well, who's in that field over there, Sam? Oh, that's Sir and Jim. What are you doing in Bella's potato patch? Picking potatoes for tomorrow's chips. It's hard, mind. My back aches. <laughs> Does it now? Well, let's have a thing. Yes, good idea that, helping Bella. Carry on the good work. Bye, Uncle Sam. Bye, Uncle Sam. Dillis Price is busy packing a picnic for Mummy's little darling, Norman. There you are, my sweet. Oh, Mum, where am I supposed to go? I got no one to play with. But go fishing, Norman. You don't love going fishing, don't you, my sweet? Oh, fishing? I don't want to... Look, Norman, I don't care if you do want to or do not want to go fishing. And you do go fishing. Now then, off you do go. Norman? Oh, Mummy's little darling. Now, now, Doris, now, I, now I won't be late. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, um... Now who needs a fire service? Barn fire, Pandilone Farm. All present under correction. Right, let's go. Mrs. Lasagna? Mamma mia, I don't know. Yeah, good fun fishing, really. Now, let's see. Ah, uh, jump tart. Oh, maggots. Look at that, we've, we've only filled half a bucket. Oh, that sounds like something serious. Great fires of London, I say. Oh. Right, man the hose, men. Come on, let's get this one before it spreads. That's it, men. On the double. Water on, sir. Water on. this little scorcher under control in two shakes and it'll be another job well done. How's the water level, sir? The, uh, the what? Uh, oh, oh. It's going down fast. How's the fire? It's going out slow, oh, sir. Oh, there's a, a problem there, sir. Not at all, Fidlington. Um, well, well, what do we do when the water runs out? Oh, we, uh... We look uh, for the uh, nearest, nearest hydrant, sir. No hydrants round here, sir. Ah, oh. Uh, well, we look for a drain and pump the water out. No drains either, sir. It's, it's all open country. Oh, dear. Um... Bumblebee's belly button. A bite? 
I do believe I got a bite. Lush. Oh, drat. Fat lot of good that is. Fire nearly out, sir. Good. Oh, water did out. Oh, um, what, water out, sir? Ah, <laughs> well, yes, I, I knew that had been up. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that, that, that was lucky, on it, sir? I've just remembered. There's a pond down the road. Perhaps we'd better fill Jupiter up and come back to dump things down anyway, sir. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, right, man. Yes, I think we should come back and dump things down anyway. Man the engine! Oh. Right, chaps. Work from open water. Ready to prime, sir. Oh, oh, it better be a fish this time. Oh, drat and double drat. Crumbs. I've done it now. I blew the plug out. Yes, that's full. Right, knock off, chaps. Well done. Ah, now all those bits and pieces have given me an idea. Hmm. Brill, Uncle Sam. But what is it? Ah, now let me demonstrate the Samuel Peyton Potato Picker. There we are. Potatoes picked. Oh, thanks a bunch, Uncle Sam. Uh, do you do deliveries too, Uncle Sam? I think we can give you a lift back to Bellas. Hey, sir, quite right. And you can give them a hand with the potatoes, Kiddlington. Eh? Oh, oh right, 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 oh, sir. Bella Lasagna's cafe next stop, eh? Come on, kids. I, I, I'll I, take your buckets. And I think it's ice creams all round. Lush. Greedy guts. Right, you two, in you get. Whoa, he's Jupiter. Perhaps I can have a lift. Oi, wait for me. Oh, Dad, oh. If you could stand on the planet where the Clangers live and you looked up, you would see the stars. If you looked around, you would see some very peculiar stars. But in between these stars, you would see emptiness. Well, not quite emptiness. Because there are things whizzing about. Rocks, bits of machinery, oh, various odds and ends. Sometimes single things, sometimes in clouds. These are the sort of things that Small Clanger is fishing for from his music boat. <coughs> Missed. There's something. Got it.
That looks to me like a teapot. But the clangers may never have seen a teapot. Yes, it has got a long nose, just like Mother Clangers. A hat? No, I don't think it's a hat. No, definitely not a hat. A soup jug. Yes, well, that's not a bad idea. It's a bit big for a soup jug. It'll take rather a lot of soup. Here he comes, small clanger in his travelling soup kitchen. Everybody must line up and he'll serve the soup. Now it's Mother Clanger's turn. Nothing in it. It's empty. No soup. There's plenty of soup in the pot. Blow through it. Well, I suppose it's the only thing to do. What a noise! And what a mess! He's going to do it again! Quite right. Take it outside. It's a noisy, messy thing. Sounds more like a trumpet than a teapot. Hey, listen. Is that an echo or something answering? Hey, look, things in the sky. They're coming down. Look out, clangers. Get below. How extraordinary.
They must go below and tell the others what happened. Look out, he's going to blow through it. That was a silly thing to do. Here they come. Here comes Tiny Clanger to fetch more soup. The soup dragon's going to wonder what happened to all that soup. Tiny can tell her what happened, but I don't think the dragon will believe her. Oh, no, no, not again. Mind out, you silly dragon. Yes, she's not coming out from there until they get rid of all those nasty, bangy things. Small and tiny have thought of something. Notes from the music trees. Now just what are they doing? Oh, that's good. It's a sort of helicopter. Very good. Up goes the teapot. And up go the teapot's friends. There it goes. I suppose it was a teapot. Well, we shall never know. when suddenly the chief's voice over the tannoy system broke the silence. Jimbo, stand by to take a VIP on board. You're about to leave on a very special mission. Oh, great. I like special missions, Chief. Where am I taking this very important person to? It's top secret, Jimbo. I will give you your destination by a recorded message as soon as you are airborne. Fantastic, Chief. When do I leave? Right now, Sammy Steps, get our VIP on board, young Jimbo, and stand by for takeoff. Wait till you see what's coming aboard, Jimbo. Is it somebody special? I'll say, here he comes now. An astronaut? God, this is a special mission. I wonder where I'm taking him. Stand by, Jimbo. Get yourself airborne as soon as you can. And don't forget what I said. Don't switch on my recorded message until you are clear of land. 
Off you go now. I'm on my way, Chief. Well, I can't wait to hear about my special mission. Now for the recorded message. Here it goes. Hello, Jimbo. This is your Chief Controller speaking. This is your recorded message. You are to switch to automatic pilot immediately. You are now programmed to fly to a secret destination where you will land at a highly secret airstrip and await further instructions. This is the end of your recorded message. Well, I've arrived. I don't know where I am, but I'm here. Hello, I, I can hear a helicopter. It's the control tower. They must have brought it all the way from London. Jimbo, are you receiving me out there? Chief? Is that you, Chief? Or is it another recorded message? It's me, a silly little jet plane, you, in the flesh, speaking to you with my very own voice from my very own control tower. Did they really fly you all this way in that control tower, Chief? Never mind about me. What you're about to see is so secret that you mustn't even tell me about it when you get back to London Airport. You can rely on me, Chief. Stand by, Mr. Astronaut. I will commence countdown from the count of ten. Ten, nine, eight... Isn't this exciting? I'm about to witness a rocket flight into space. Three, two, one. We have liftoff. Oh, hey, what's going on? We've got the wrong liftoff. Help! Stop me, somebody. I'm not qualified for space travel. Gosh! Somebody sent the control tower into space instead of the rocket. It's not fair. I've waited years to go into space, and that stupid chief of yours beats me to it. He's not even trained. <laughs> oh, come on, Mr. Astronaut. Get aboard and I'll fly you home. Back to London Airport. <laughs> Hello, London Airport. Permission to land, please. Hello, is that you, Jimbo? It's Tommy Door Truck here. Can you hang on a moment? We're waiting for the control tower to land. The control tower? Hello, London. Permission to land, please. This is the first time I've had to wait for the control tower to land before me, Chief. <laughs> Come on, Chief, hurry up. I've got an astronaut on board. He's very upset. Not half as upset as I'm going to be when I get down, Chief <laughs> Well, Chief, somebody's in for a rocket, that's for sure. Chief <laughs> <laughs>